Bitter Apples. Little Harry Buckley gathered an apron full of apples once, which, though beautiful to look upon, proved to be very bitter apples to him. His mother was sitting by the window one day sewing when she thought she heard a strange dog in the garden. Something was creeping by the fence very cautiously and carefully, and she watched to see what it could be. Presently a little bare golden head came to view from behind the currant bushes, and yes, it was Harry. But how slowly he walked, and how curiously he behaved. He did not look up at his mother's window as usual, his face all sunshine with bright smiles. No, his head instead was drooped quite low, and he had an apron full of something, for he held it up quite tight with both hands. Could it be that her little boy had robbed a bird's nest when she had told him so many times what a sinful, wicked thing that was to do? That was her first thought. Then she waited to hear what he would say when he saw her. Where is your hat, little golden head? She called out to him when he got under her window. Golden head? stopped suddenly at the sound of the voice, and his name might have been Scarlet Cheeks. From the color that flushed into them as he stammered an answer, Here it is, Mama, in my apron. It's full of nice, sweet apples. See? Who gave them to you, Harry? asked his mother in a eager voice, a dart of suspicion stabbing her heart, as she thought that she recognized the fruit. Nobody, Mama, they're ours, just as much as anyone's. Frankie Wilson said so. But where did you get all those pretty apples, Harry? asked his mother, looking very earnestly at his little flushed face. Why, they hung over the stone wall right in the road, and Frankie said they were anybody's apples, and we could have an apron full if we wanted to. But where did the tree grow? questioned his mother, still watching the anxious little face. Oh, the tree grew in Farmer Bates' garden, but these apples hung over the wall in the road, and they're anybody's apples, Mama. The, the little voice shook a little now. How did you get them? Were they on the ground in the road? No, Frankie helped me up in the tree, because I was the littlest, and I just picked them off and threw them down. Frankie said the apples that grew over the wall were anybody's apples. Mama, well, if the tree is his... Don't you think all the apples that grow on the tree are his, too? I told Frankie so, Mama, all the time, but he said no, that apples that grow over the wall were anybody's apples, and we could have a whole apron full. These were ours. Oh, no, Harry, answered his mother in very decided tones. They are not yours, nor anyone's, but Farmer Bates who owns the tree, and I am sure from your words and from your face, and the guilty way in which I saw you creeping home along the fence, I am sure my little boy felt in his heart that it was not right to take those apples. Did you not, Harry? But Frankie Wilson said, I don't care what Frankie Wilson or anybody said. Did you not feel that it was wrong? Why, Harry, don't you know it was stealing? Is my little Harry a thief? And his mother's voice was very sad indeed. No, no, I am not. 
their hateful, sour, bitter apples, and the little hat was passionately tossed to the floor, and the fruit rolled in every direction. Yes, Harry, continued his mother, you took those apples from Farmer Bates' trees without his knowledge or consent. They are his apples, not yours. Now I am sure that my little boy would like to do what was, what is right, and he will pick up every one, put them in his basket, and carry them over to Mrs. Bates, and tell her that they are her apples that you gathered from their tree. No, 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 I can't, I can't, sobbed Harry in grief and shame. Oh, yes, you can replied his mother, because it is right. Oh, I can't, Mama, I can't. His mother looked very sorrowful. Was this the end of all her teachings and trials to make her little one choose right from wrong? What should she do? After a while, he repeated sobs of, I can't, I can't. The sobs grew fainter and finally ceased. Then there was deep silence in the room, and his mother feared that her little one had gone to sleep with sin on his conscience. Presently he roused himself and came over to his mother's knee and sobbed very quietly now. I was a naughty boy, Mama. I will do right. Kiss me and give me the basket. And while he gathered together the apples that lay upon the floor, his mother said in a pleased voice, I am so happy that you have chosen to do right at last. His mother kissed him, and he started on his unpleasant errand. His mother watched him all the way. It was only the next lot to theirs, and she felt every step he took as deeply as he did himself. He paused when he came to the door. She feared. Perhaps he would fail at last to acknowledge his wrong. Are we not all faint-hearted and weak at such times? But no, it was only for a moment. One went up the steps and into the house. Presently, a little bounding figure came skipping down the road, and very soon a bright happy face shone in the doorway, and Harry cried, Oh, mother, I am so glad I took them back. I feel so much better here. With his little hand upon his heart, I will never, never do anything I know is wrong again. And mother, Mrs. Bates, said that she saw us all the time, and she felt sorry that a big boy would make a little fellow do such a thing. I told her that I was naughty too, as well as Frankie, or I wouldn't have let him persuade me. I told her I was sorry and would never do such a thing again, and she kissed me and said she didn't believe I ever would. And now, Mama, will you kiss me and forgive me? Yes, my darling, answered his mother. I forgive you with all my heart, and I hope now... You will ask God to forgive you as well. He saw you commit the sin, and he wants you to ask his pardon. And when little Harry said his prayers that night, he asked that he might never be tempted to do a deed which he knew in his heart was a sin. And he never to this day eats an apple that he is not reminded of the little taste of experience he had through gathering one apron full of bitter apples.